Welcome back to our series on computational thinking. In this section, we're going to program a motor, a servo, and a sensor, which is kind of a lot to cover in one video. So instead, we'll be splitting up the content over three parts. Part one, programming a motor, part two, programming a servo, and part three, programming a sensor. Welcome to part one, programming a motor. What do we need to know before we get started? Well, it's important to have an active configuration file for your robot. We also need to access the Blocks programming tool through our web browser. An op mode, which is short for operational mode, is a program that is executed by the robot controller. The first one we're going to write will control a DC motor. How do we get started? Well, let's think about how we want our system to behave while running the op mode. The op mode should provide instructions that result in this desired output behavior. For this example, we want our op mode to turn on the DC motor to a certain power level and display the information about the rotation of the motor for the user. Great, let's get started. Here's the completed program. Let's walk through the steps to write the op mode and make the motor move. Here you can see where the initialization blocks and the run blocks will go, and also where the loop blocks are commented within the while loop. Commented within? Is that like special blocks language? Well, how cool are we? First, go to blocks in the upper left corner. Select create an op mode, type in simple motor, then press OK. We will need to do this for each op mode we create. The blocks tool provides you with a framework that you can use to build your own op mode. The purple bracket with the label run op mode is the main body or main function of the op mode. The blocks or instructions included in this bracket will be executed sequentially from top to bottom. Now that the basic structure of the op mode is on screen, we want to add programming blocks to the function to make the motor behave the way we would like it to. Select the actuators category, then DC motors, to display a list of blocks that can be used to control a motor. Let's set the mode for this motor. Select the Set Simple Motor Mode block, then in the dropdown select Stop and Reset Encoder. Place under the Put Run Blocks Here comment. Note that Simple Motor refers to the name that we assign the motor in our robot's configuration file. Go back to Actuators, DC Motor, and select the Set Simple Motor Mode block again. Place the new block under the existing block and change to Run Using Encoder Mode. Wait, what's an encoder? An encoder is a device that tracks the rotation of a motor's shaft. Encoders can be used to measure how far a robot travels. For example, if your motor is equipped with a four inch diameter wheel, then every time the motor shaft makes one complete rotation, the robot travels 12.6 inches, which is the circumference of the wheel. Okay, we also need to set the power for the motor. Go to actuators, DC motor, and select the set power block. And place it under our existing blocks. Change the power level to 0.3. You've completed the blocks that will turn on the motor. Now we can use the while loop to send information back from the robot to the driver station. Okay, so this is where we'll call the telemetry function. So to do this, go to the utilities category, find telemetry, then select the first option with a key and a number. It looks like this. Place the telemetry block under Put Loop Blocks Here comment in the while loop. In the key field, type the words Encoder Position. Then go to Actuators, DC Motor, and look for Simple Motor Current Position Block. Connect it to the number field of the telemetry block. Right, and make sure you have the blocks in the correct order. Then it's time to save the op mode. Once the op mode has been saved, you can run it from the driver's station. On the driver's station, select the arrow on the right, then select Simple Motor. Press the initialization icon, then play to see your motor continuously move. Press Stop to 
stop this movement. While the motor is moving, you should see the current position of the motor displayed at the bottom of the driver's station screen. Congratulations! You completed your first op mode. Don't forget to join us next time for part two, programming a servo. Until then, goodbye, goodbye everyone! everyone.